Well, today, guys, I have something very exciting to share with you. Let's talk about it. Okay, so recently, Paul from over at Not An Apple Fan and I were having a little friendly disagreement, as friends do, over the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti because we're absolute hardware nerds. Now, I told Paul that I thought that the RTX 4070 would indeed beat the RTX 3080, and the 4070 Ti is indeed roughly on par with the RTX 3090 Ti, even when it comes to 4K. However, Paul disagreed with me, and he said that not only would the 4070 not beat the RTX 3080, but he also said that he thought the 3090 Ti was a far better 4K card because of its much higher memory bandwidth. And he said that the 4070 Ti was not a good 4K card because it has just 504 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth despite its massive increase in cache. Well, thankfully guys, today Galax sent over their new 4070 Ti so we can finally get to the bottom of whether or not the 4070 Ti is indeed a good 4K card. And also you might remember Galax for their Hall of Fame graphics card, so they definitely have a lot of very good overclocking graphics cards, and we're also going to be testing that. Can we improve its 4K performance through overclocking? Well, let's go ahead and take a look, but first, of course, we got to do a quick unboxing, so let's get right into it. But what does the video card look like? Well, let's find out. What do we got? Well, a ton of stuff came out. Step-by-step -step guide, I'd like to see that. Get that out of here. Wow, guys, this is a chonky boy. So I was definitely expecting to see something good from Galax and they did not disappoint. It looks like it can dissipate a lot of heat and we're definitely gonna put that to the test when we put it in the test bench, which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. It is also sponsored by Kingston. Thank you guys so much for sending over the SSD and the 32 gigabytes of 6400 megahertz DDR5, which I will be running at 6000 CL30 on this Ryzen system. But now let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed and get into the benchmarks. Oh. But before we take a look at the benchmarks real quick, I want to thank Galax for sending over not only their 4070 Ti, which includes all of Nvidia's latest technologies like DLSS 2, 3, and AV1 encoding, but also their ultimate Galax gaming setup, including their new Vivance 1 gaming monitor, which is a 27-inch 1440p 165Hz wide gamut HDR IPS G-Sync display with an incredible 95% DCI-P3 coverage, making it excellent for both gaming and work. And they also sent over their Slider 5 gaming mouse, which is an incredibly lightweight 60 gram RGB wired gaming mouse with tons of customization. Plus their GPU can be easily overclocked using their Extreme Tuner Plus software and can even be controlled right from your phone. So if you wanna learn more about not only their RTX 40 series GPUs, but also their monitors and peripherals, be sure to click the links in the description below and check out their Amazon store and subscribe to the display guy for a full review of their new monitor. But now it's time to take a look at their 4070 Ti. And starting off with Time Spy Extreme first running it at stock settings, I got a score of 9,554, which doesn't put it far off from some of the top 3090 Ti scores using the same Ryzen 7 7700X processor that I am. But where things got really interesting is that I was able to overclock my 4070 Ti to over 3 gigahertz thanks to the great cooler and 1135 millivolt limit on this Galax model which is the highest voltage limit I've seen yet on a retail Nvidia graphics card and not only that but I was able to increase the memory bandwidth all the way from 504 gigabytes per second to 597.6 gigabytes per second an insane nearly 19% increase in memory bandwidth which altogether gave me a score of 10,237 and while that isn't a huge increase increase or the already high stock score that puts it right up with the fastest 3090 Ti's and it actually puts me as having the number one worldwide score with my CPU and 4070 Ti. But what about games? Well first up I launched Cyberpunk 2077 and at stock using ultra settings and ray tracing I got an average frame rate of 51.3, a 1% low of 46.7 and a 0.1% low of 43.8 so definitely no signs of major major frame drops or other issues, but it only got even better with an overclock giving me an average of 54.6, a 1% low of 50.9, and a 0.1% low of 47.8, which is actually about 10% faster across the board. But next, taking a look at Fortnite, here I found something very interesting. At stock, using ultra settings and ray tracing, I got an average frame rate of 57.8, a 1% low of 44.9, and a 0.1% low of 17.5, so it does look like there was a pretty big drop 
drop at one point, but I've definitely noticed that Fortnite is one of those games that will have some frame drops no matter what your hardware is, and especially when using ray tracing, but can the overclock improve these results? Well, with my overclock, I got an average frame rate of 57.8, a 1% low of 51.6, and a 0.1% low of 32.1, which considering how dynamic this game is, I wouldn't be surprised if these results change somewhat if I ran it three more times, but yes, as you can see, at least in the runs I did, the overclock allowed for an insane 83% increase in the 0.1% lows. So with this information, what's my opinion on the 4070 Ti in terms of its 4K gaming performance? Well, here's what I think. For the last couple of years, many people thought the RTX 3080 with 760 gigabytes per second and 10 gigabytes of VRAM was enough for 4K. And honestly, in most cases, I would say that's still true today. And while it does technically have a nearly 51% increase in memory bandwidth over the 4070 Ti at stock settings, it has two two gigabytes of less VRAM, way less cache, which can help tremendously with the GPU's effective memory bandwidth. And after an overclock, the 4070 Ti can close the gap further by approaching close to 600 gigabytes per second, at least on my Galax model, making the 3080 have only about 27% higher memory bandwidth. So overall, I'd say that with the extra two gigabytes of VRAM and similar, if not greater effective memory bandwidth when including the cache, that the 4070 Ti is probably actually a better 4K card in terms of raw performance at least after an overclock versus the 3080. Now, as you saw, there may be times when a stock 4070 Ti's lower bandwidth could impact its 0.1% lows, and especially when compared to the 3090 Ti, there may be situations where that card will feel smoother when loading up over 12 gigabytes of VRAM, considering it has 24 gigabytes of the stuff and over 1,000 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. But when you consider the 4070 Ti has not only DLSS 2, but also DLSS 3, I think ultimately this GPU should have no trouble running the majority of games at 4k without issue especially if you're willing to grab a premium model and do some memory overclocking